she had to do She might have a letter in Tennessee. Okay, we, uh, we'll call the uh, town board meeting to order at uh, 7.06 or 04. The, uh, the uh, clock is a little off. <laughs> it hasn't been changed. <laughs> it says 8. But we'll have to get up there with a ladder and do it. Uh, could we stand for the uh, invocation and the uh, pledge of allegiance? Jim. Lord Father in heaven, thank you for this opportunity to me to do the town's business. We ask you to guide us in all that we do, that we do the right thing for all the people in town. We ask this in faith. Amen. 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 Please remain standing for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and the visible Sandy, could you uh, ask for the roll? Council Member Favoldi. Here. Council Member Schaefer. Council Member Gray. Yes. Councilwoman Laura. Here. Supervisor Esposito. Present. Also uh, present is Connor Smith. He's filling in for Gerard tonight. Gerard's not going to be here. He's an associate with uh, with Parisi's firm. So. We already called the town board meeting to order at 7 I'll call it 7.06 now. Privilege of the floor, at every scheduled town board meeting, the public shall have the right to address the town board during the course of the meeting referred to as privilege of the floor. Members of the public should restrict their comments to items of town business. <coughs> Although there is no official time constraint, speakers should be considerate of others so that all interested members of the public have an opportunity to be heard. There shall be one portion of the meeting dedicated to privilege of the floor near the beginning of each meeting. All remarks and questions shall be addressed to the board. No person shall enter a discussion with a person having the floor. Council members may address any comments during the portion of the meeting referred to as council member comments. Privilege of the floor is opened up at uh, 707. We did no normal monitoring of the water. We did flat inspection. All the reports were uh, fit into the state on time. Uh, we had the generators uh, inspected here the maintenance. And we had to replace the water pump on the generator of the well field. But that engine was built in 1998, so it's 21 years old. So even though it doesn't get a lot of use, it's still 20 years of you know, gaskets went and pumps started going bad. We were leaking the antifreeze, so we had that replaced. We had the two uh, PRV Ross valves rebuilt on Giffords Church Road, uh, the upper one and the lower one. Um, we shouldn't have to do that for another six, seven years. You know, they start seeping out of the bottom, and that's when you know it's time. The state came and cleaned out the ditches along there, and the water was flowing a lot better, so it'll stop our pits from uh, hopefully flooding in the spring. But we'll revisit it, and if we have to build them, hopefully we will. But I think if we can stay on the state to keep cleaning the ditches like they should, I don't think we'll have a problem with it. I, I think when it was designed, it was designed under the pretense that the state would take care of the, of the ditches. So if that happens, it will be great. Um, we had the two water tanks inspected by Aquastore. We're still waiting for the final reports. 
He said there was some ice damage on the water tanks, but that's normal. Um, even though we got the circulation pump running up on uh, South Hill, the mixer in um, yeah, Ruder Drive has been broke for a while, but we'll get pictures of that and see what we have to do with that. Um, I would go to a bubbler if we did it again instead of the mixer. They're a little easier to maintain. They're less mechanical. There's just pipes at different, at different heights like you put around the boat and keeps bubbles water through it. It's not from freezing. So. <coughs> but that's something we can decide later on once you get the report and the recommendation, the best way to handle it. Um, <coughs> I did reach out to, I was talking to the supervisor, I sent a, a form that they had online to Verizon to see if they'd be interested maybe uh, putting an antenna on one of our water tanks. We could create some good revenue that way. We would probably get around 20000 or more dollars a year from each uh, cell tower user if we could get them. I'm doing some research now for AT&T and um, Sprint because I know they don't have a lot, a lot of good coverage out here. So if we could catch a couple, it's <coughs> really not free money. But I did talk to the guy that inspected the water tanks. The water tanks are, uh, when they were built, they were built so designed so you could put antennas on them. So that wouldn't be any, any really more expensive to us. It would all be on them to do it. To do the engineering, we'd probably put it through your planning commission to, like you said, they'd have to put their own generator on site. That's really, they're just renting the space. And Mark, uh, just to interject for a second, I went to a meeting at the county uh, building uh, last week, and I met with the emergency communications organization, mm -hmm. and uh, they, we had a, we had to pass their budget, our budget for right. communications, and one of the things that they talked about was the construction of another one or possibly two towers. And I'm wondering if maybe they might be a candidate oh, that's to, use our, to, to use our thing. So, so what I'll do is I'll send an email to them right. indicating that we have space. Where, do, where is our space? Uh, Settles Hill. Settles Hill and, and Ruder Drive. Settles Hill. Right. And you know what the elevation is on you? No, I'd have to look it up. Um, so, I don't know what I'm but that would be a I mean, that's what a lot of times they Settles do. Settles Hill is the highest one. That's, that's the highest one. Settles Hill is the highest one. I'll, I'll send an email yeah. to them because they, we communicate, you know, regularly when these meetings are lined up and, uh, you know, we just we just passed our budget, but they said in in the in the budget when they explained it that that uh, they were looking for another place to erect a full tower. So, you know, well, we got, yeah, we got the, the obstacle for them to put it on. Yeah, so I'm going to have a tower them. over there that they already put. They, yeah, they need another one. They're, they're, this, um, this whole system is being expanded and, and brought up to speed. So uh, they're, they're, they're investing a lot of money and, and uh, changing a lot of things, radios and everything. They explained it all at the meeting. But uh, I'll pass that along. Oh, that'd be great. And I'll have, I'll tell them to, you know, to contact me or contact you. Yeah, yeah, and you know, sit down a lot of meetings, see what they got to do. Yeah. I mean, so, badly. If entertain anything that would help bring in revenue to, to the town. Yeah, because they're talking about building, constructing a tower, and there was, the numbers they were shooting around were huge. Oh, they are huge. So, I mean, most, I mean, you can usually get between twenty and $25,000 for one antenna on a water tank, yeah. and you usually give them like a five-year lease, but in the lease, what you do is you built in inflation, so it goes up automatically every year, so you don't have to renegotiate except for five years. You protect I'll yourself. get the emails out tomorrow. All right. Uh, so that was done, and then we had uh, the water main break on Gifford Church. It was a pretty long day. Four. Start, huh? It was four. Yeah, four. We had two water services that started leaking, so we had those fixed. And then the valve let loose, so we dug down and we fixed that, and it was the bolts rotted out again, and it blew out. And then the next morning they were filling, but then we could never find the hydrant valve, and they located it while they were working on the other valve, so. Wes called and I hadn't got to work yet. I got it and uh, called early, and we decided to dig right back and fix that one while we're there because and good thing we did because three bolts were already rotted out, so we replaced that. And then when we're going around marking everything this year with the stakes, um, on the plans there's it says there's a lot of hydrant valves and we couldn't locate them, so I didn't know if that was the plans we had were the as built, the final ones or the other ones. So chances are there are some valves there, but they didn't bring them up up above ground, they didn't put risers on them, and they're down a couple feet. So in the spring, we'll try to see. I mean, I don't think, I think they would put a valve on every hydrant, but I can't there say for sure. Valve on every yeah, and so we're gonna have to locate them and then dig them up and put risers on them. 
so we can get to them if we have to, because they're probably, if they, if they all pick them up with our detector, they gotta be probably a couple feet deep, I would imagine. They're just too lazy to put another stack on it. I don't know how, how it's explained. <laughs> so we fixed those, and um, Lou came out, and Jim came out, and Doug was there with us, and Wes, Preston, and Gene. In fact, when we got done with the water services, and then all of a sudden we had the valve blow, and, and we had to start all over again. But it was a long day, but it got done, and that's the main thing. Everybody worked as a team. Nobody, you know, we got a little frustrated at times, but just because of what we're finding, I mean, they didn't really put sand under the valves or the pipe or up top. In fact, I got some pictures. I'll have to have them try to blow them up, but. They actually took two big boulders to hold up the valve box and then just filled around it with the stuff they took out. And you get a lot of traffic on that road and a lot of vibration. And I think that's a lot of the problem why your bolts are rotten because they didn't bend it in sand. I mean, like I said, 20 years the it's. bolts were shot. They're, they're, I'm telling you, yeah. there was nothing left. They were just, they were, they were like pencils. I mean, Rotterdam just had that water main break and uh, they had a valve and they had one bolt, but those were like 50 years old. I mean, ours are 20. Um, so I mean, we'll just deal with it. I mean, that's all you can engineering do. should. I said this six, eight years ago. <laughs> they, uh, I talked to Doug Cole. That was supposed to be sand all around that. Yeah. Whoever were the followers were did not put the sand. I on. said six, seven years ago when I got in here. I said all these water main breaks. I've been to every one of. Them. There's no sand, no stone, nothing. No, it's just. Jump. Whatever they dug out, they put Whatever back. they dug out, they put back. In. Look, Doug said that they were supposed to, that, oh, yeah. that was budgeted. Well, what happened with the guy that was supposed to be the job follower? Because he had one there, we paid for it. Yeah, well, it he, was, should he, have, three. He, he should have submitted a, a daily or weekly uh, report to the engineering company stating that <coughs> he did what they were supposed I to wish do. We could go back, but it's too late. No, well, why but is it too late, though? I mean, is there a. I uh, talked to I know you can't. about it. It's oh, too late. Did? It's. it's uh, it's almost impossible to go back. He says you don't even go back for a murder seven years, let alone a, uh, a uh, you something go like this. Back to the state, though, they gave you a lot of money. I, uh, I asked him nasty. that question, too. Yeah. And he said it's, it's almost impossible. The time limit has is, is lapsed, from what I understand. That's what Gerard had but, said to me. So, because uh, I questioned him yeah. about it. Maybe there's a shot at it, but yeah. after so, uh, so this that, long yeah. time, it's. Uh, we brought that up a few years back, remember, Doug? We brought that up yeah. about doing this and uh, Yeah, because I saw an estimate about stuff. fixing everything. It was over a million dollars to get a contract that came in and replaced everything. We did apply for a grant yeah. for a uh, million dollars to, uh, to yeah. fix this water system, but we scored so low on it, we resubmitted it this year, mm -hmm. so we're just waiting to hear it. Well, you really got a young system, so it's hard for them to give you more money to do stuff for that. It should have been done before. Yeah, we could. We just neglect. Yeah. That's the thing. You know, but that, that was about, uh, and like I said, I want to really thank everybody, and, and, and I always say that, but this community does come together when, when they need to. It's, and that means a lot, especially to the guys out there working. Doug was out there, he hopped in the machine, he really liked it, he didn't kid nobody. And, uh, but no, it, it's appreciative. West appreciates it, Preston, Gene, myself. It, it does mean something when people show up. It makes you feel like, you know, they care in a lot of communities. I don't want to say anything, but a lot of people don't. Did you give me the number for AT&T? And no, I'll bring it in. I got it at home. I was researching again. Because sometimes you have to, well, you can fill it out online. It's, you know, the Internet's one of those things where sometimes it's friendly, sometimes it's not. But um, that's a start. We're going to make the direction. <coughs> the, 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 you know, the county, some the State police, there are some people that are always looking for community. We just passed the budget. The we got the money. Right here. Yeah. That's so we might need a jumper. I mean, you know, they need towers to piggyback off of, basically. And I know I read in the paper, Como is a big thing about getting better communication, especially out in rural areas. So, hey, it's worth investigating. That's, and we don't get nothing for this. We own this over here. At the you got something. Well, you're nice guys. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, so we're going in the right direction. In the springtime, we'll start finding the valves. Um, we have a, a weekly uh, maintenance checklist now that we put into play, so that's done every on a weekly basis and we sign off on it, so we're moving in the right direction. And uh, There's one other possible option too, but we it's very premature to even think about this, but now that we own that property next door, I mean, it's possible way in the corner, we could actually, if we could actually 
have a tower put up there. Yeah, right? they have that too. They're right next to us. They could do that on their land, the sheriff's department. Yeah, but they own that. Yeah, we we could too. I mean, I mean, so they're looking for they're putting the tower one way or the other. I mean, yeah, I, we just passed the money, yeah, the budget money for, so it's gonna happen. Throw your name in the hat. So I'll, I'll send an email yeah. tomorrow and, and see you, if we can brought, at least be content. You look at any glider tank; mm -hmm. they always have a lot of antennas on. I mean, it saves, it saves AT and T. I mean, it saves them a lot of money. All they do is pay rent, and then they just pass it on to the consumer. So that's it. We also talked, Parker and I have been talking about uh, uh, selling water to some of the municipalities in the area too. I don't know if we want to get into that now, but uh, I think that's a you know Clark suggested that that would be something we should be looking at. As long as we control it. And uh, that's the whole thing. Talking about maybe Rotterdam would be interested, and I talked to Roger up in uh, in Duanesburg to see if they would be interested in it, and he's going to pass it on to their board that maybe they would like to. to uh, I'm I'm more. enthusiastic about it because we have um, we have an asset yeah. that that we're not leveraging to the max. We we could certainly uh, increase top line revenue cash flow coming into the water right. system, which we could use because of the unusually high cost of our repairs. Right. So for me, it makes sense to, to try to increase top line revenue I, I agree to cover you. these expenses that are coming I mean, you up. You got so, good quality water. Yep, we got a great yeah. asset and we can, you know, we can, you know, we could and probably should utilize that asset yeah. further. As long as like water, man, there would be no infrastructure. Right. Perfect. Right. Because they're they're tied in right now, right down here by yeah, the truck stop. Yeah. But as long as we can control the situation. The qualifier is can we supply that? Do we have Well we, we would have to sit down and decide how much we're willing to give it. That's the most important thing. And, and if there are studies to be done, then the person that wants to buy water from us should be responsible for the studies and we would, we would have somebody examine. I mean, if, if I don't think we should start shelling out money for somebody that wants something from us. I mean, that's just my opinion for what it's worth. Yeah, you know, the holy grail is that we have to have supply for our time. Oh, yeah. I mean, you've got plenty of supply because you don't really have a lot of right. users. If we have 100 times that, then certainly, you know. Like, it, like even like, I don't know, if <coughs> I live out in the country, they're more conservative with the water because for years they were on wells. Where people that are brought up with the water system seem to be abuse it. Where here you're more conscious of, of what you use water for. And that's why your, your demand, really, and the 300 customers, I mean, they got enough. We're pumping water. how much? 40,000 thing, but I mean, you could pump another 100,000 without any problem, and sometimes it would help your system. It'd make your tank, tank the work harder. The the better it gets. It does. What's the uh, maximum we could pump? Well, you could probably pump, maximum you could probably pump a half a million day, but you don't want to run your pumps that much. I mean, there would be a happy number we'd have to come up with that we could live with. Because, you know, if you start beating up your, our equipment, then you're just adding cost to us, and we don't want to do that. We want to, you know, have money come in, but at really no extra cost to us, except for the normal. Well, there, there will be extra cost. <laughs> yes, there will be extra cost. Top line but, revenue covers it. Yes, yes that's the whole thing. Yeah. You know, so. The easiest thing is with Rotterdam, if, they, if they're interested. Right, because we got the connection here. There's not a lot of elevation. I mean, you know, we got enough pressure where we could push water to them, especially, I, I mean, I know from past experience in the summer months, they have very little water pressure on the shell on area. So, I don't, I don't want to get into that here, but, uh, um, no, that would, I mean, like, like you say, I mean, you should explore all possibilities of bring revenue in, as long as, it, I mean, it's like a business. Yeah, it's that a is, business, it's an asset. It's an asset. Yeah, that's it, you gotta explore it. I mean, right. if you got something good, then you, you try to. I'm gonna reach out to Tom Song over here and see if he's, uh, just give me the uh, numbers yeah, for AT and T to to I can uh, so. get in contact with them. Mm -hmm. I guess other than that, any questions for Clark? No, thank you, Clark. Right. Well, well, nice nice you guys are doing. You I you've had a rough month, and uh, we so okay. appreciate it. That's just part of the game. So, thank you. Okay, highway. Uh, Nick Morrison is not here, he's still working. So he, uh, we had a problem up on Ruder Drive. The uh, county came up, 
We had to hire them to fix the uh, storm sewers. Two of them were uh, that were collapsing. And the county came up right away and uh, repaired them, so we're going to have to be paying them for the repair work. That was up on Rooter Drive, and it's all been taken care of. Other than that, just some complaints with the mailboxes being knocked down and with this latest storm, some people complaining about the plowing of the roads uh, that the county has done there. They didn't, their, their driveways were snowed in, but uh, I don't know what we can do about that. That's up to the, uh, the, the, the complaints have to go to the county since we pay them for uh, plowing of the roads of uh, our town roads, but mostly of them, it was uh, the, you know, the county roads that people had complained about, but I don't know what you can do when you get that much snow, it's got to go someplace. Okay, other than that, everything else with the highway department is okay. Code enforcement. Where is uh, building? It's November, October. November's the one you want. 20 October, November, excuse me. November. This is from uh, our building inspector, Tom Barini. Total permits one, permits issued one. Permit inspection fees collected $54, inspection 17, code zoning, inspections 2, fire inspection 0, final building inspections 1, certificates of occupancy compliance 1, bank deposit $54, check to supervisor 0, checkbook balance as of December 10, 2019, $1,892.24, activities and zoning 1, working on complaints as needed, working on planning and zoning as needed, working on permits. Final inspection as needed, reviewing plans as needed. Thomas Verdini, building inspector. If you got any questions for him, he's in the other room. We can call him. Is there any questions for Tom? No. Jim? No. Okay. I've got no back. report this month. <laughs> it's been quiet all month. No calls, no complaints. Quiet? Very quiet. No, dogs around. barking maybe, but nobody complaining about it. <laughs> a lot of dog barking, but nobody's complaining. There's a lot of that all over now. Everybody loves their dogs. Now it's been quiet. Okay. Which is good. It makes up for the previous months. <laughs> Things get a little rowdier out here in Princetown. <laughs> we don't seem to have any complaints in Princetown about dogs barking. Or I never do out there. I don't hear about it. Just the anymore. runners, you know. So. People concerned about getting hit. Any questions for Ben? No. no. Okay, thank you. Yep. Let's see. Court, I've got a report from uh, our judge. Uh, this has been a slow month, she said. Report to controller is uh, $6,768. Not sure why tickets are down. The room has been completed and looks amazing. In the next two weeks, we'll start to transition into getting the files on the shelves and hopefully make for a more organized and better location to have our tickets and criminal files. I will purchase the safe for the, for the room and we'll start to utilize that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Doug Thorpe. We ordered shelving for that room over there, and that's going to be for the uh, for the uh, court system. There, uh, he placed all of the uh, shelving in, and that's where the safe is going to go for the uh, for the uh, judge's office. So, it looks very nice. If anybody wants to go back and look, the door is open. He did a good job putting in up all of the shelving. So, <clears throat> any questions on uh, Michelle's report? Jim? No. Okay. The assessor, we don't have anything from him. Buildings and grounds, uh, there's really nothing to report. It's been quiet as of that. They, uh, we did, we were going to transfer all of that wire or the lighting over to, to the town hall, but we got snowed in. Now it's going to have to wait till spring. 
we did purchase the wire that's going to be coming into the building. Uh, electrician did some work in the back over here, put some lights up in the back. He repaired the, we needed uh, smoke detectors in the uh, state police building. They were installed, uh, electric with a battery backup, 10 year uh, smoke detectors as required by the state. And there's going to be some doors replaced over there, exterior doors in the back that should have been done a while back, but uh, that's going to be done in a couple, and in the coming month. Other than that, uh, nothing else going on in here. We're going to be uh, probably looking at painting this uh, courtroom over here and brushing it up and see why this uh, corner over here has been uh, the suite that we might have in here. Doug Thorpe says he's going to start working on this if, uh, to do the painting this, this winter, if it's uh, okay with the uh, town board. He's going to look into what might be causing yeah. it? Yeah, well he's going to take it because it's going to have to be repaired, cut out and repaired. And he said he would like to start working on paint the, paint the interior of the, uh, the courtroom. Here's hasn't been done since the building was built, so. Are you going to change the color or pretty much keep it the same neutral? I have no thoughts on it, to be truthful with you. I suppose it would probably be just the same color, I'm assuming. It would be the easiest way to freshen it up so you wouldn't have to primer it, I guess. Any questions for me? No. Okay. Public hearings, we have none. Meeting minutes, it is hereby resolved that the meeting minutes of November 12, 2019, regular town board meeting are approved or as amended. Make a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Sandy? Councilman Cavaldi? Yes. Councilman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Resolution passed. Authorization of contract with the Animal Protection Foundation. We do this every year, am I correct, Sandy? Every two years. Every two years, okay. Be it resolved that the Town Board of Town of Princetown hereby authorizes the supervisor to execute a two year contract with the Animal Protective Foundation to provide shelter services to the Town of Princetown. Good discussion. Is there a motion? I'll make it. Is there a second? Second. Sandy? Councilman Pavoldi? Yes. Councilwoman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Resolution passed. Schedule of 2020 organizational meeting. It is hereby resolved that the 2020 organizational meeting is scheduled for Thursday, January 2nd, 2020 at 6 p.m. at the Princetown Town Hall. The town clerk is hereby directed to post notification of such meeting as may be required. This is something that has to be done every year at the beginning of the, of the year and because the appointments have to be made before people can continue to work, really. But uh, is there any problem with the date and the time? No. No. Jim? No. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Sandy? Councilman Pavoni? Yes. Councilwoman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Resolution passed. What time are we meeting? Uh uh, just eight, uh, six. Six o'clock. General funds claims. As hereby resolved, the town board approves claims number 231 through 275 in the amount of $26,690 or $669.32. Discussion? Is there a motion? I'll make it. And a second? Second. Sandy? Councilman Pavoli. Uh, yes. Councilman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Resolution passed. Waterfronts claims. It hereby resolved the town board approves claims number 121 through 140 in the amount of $31,275.52. Uh, this discussion on this, these are the repairs that uh, 
that the water commissioner has been making on the uh, water system. That's why it's kind of high. Making sure everything's up and running. And it's, uh, <coughs> it's all up to code. Is there a discussion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Sandy? Councilman Pavoldi? Yes. Councilwoman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gregg? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Resolution passed. It is hereby resolved that the town board approves claim number five through number six in the amount of four hundred forty-two dollars and eighty-nine cents. This is highway claims. Any discussion? Is there a motion? I'll make it. Is there a second? Second. Sandy. Councilman Pavoldi. Yes. Councilwoman Mora. Yes. <coughs> Councilman Gray. Yes. Extra Esposito. Yes. Resolution passed. Highway transfer is hereby resolved. The town board approves claims. The transfer of $442.89 from account number 99019 to account 5031. A discussion? Is there a motion? I'll make it. Is there a second? I'll second. Sandy? Councilman <coughs> Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Trust and agency fund claim is hereby resolved that the town board approves claim number 14 in the amount of $7,847.36. Discussion? Is there a motion? I'll make it. Is there a second? I'll say. Sandy? Councilman Pavoldi? Yes. Councilwoman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Okay. Council member comments or discussions? I have none. I don't yeah. have um, I met today uh, with. Sorry, I didn't mean that. I met with Dr. Uh, <coughs> I can't read my own writing. His last name is McHugh, Dr. McHugh Bellis Hospital in charge of emergency medicine. Uh, they have agreed to uh, sign up as kind of like an assistant uh, administrator for us for our AED that's out there. That's just that evidently the state wants to know that there's some medical affiliation that is kind of keeping an eye on things. There's requirements uh, for the AED that it be constantly tested and maintained, which I do test and maintain. In fact, I just put, um, uh, it is triple charged every day by a lithium battery, and they do go bad, so it has to be checked. I just replaced it. Uh, so there's a certain amount of maintenance, and they just want to make sure that we are doing our proper maintenance and that we have folks that know how to use it. And I am going to come in uh, on an afternoon and uh, do an in-service on that so that anybody uh, who's here, particularly I'd like to do it when the, when the, you know, when the judge is here because you know, that way she will, she'll have the uh, training to use in the event there's something that happens. So that's the only thing I have. And I will say one, I will though say one more thing. And, uh, and I know I've said this before, but it bears repeating. And you know, our supervisor, Lou, uh, I tried to talk him into maybe raising his salary because he's here every day. He's doing yeoman's work. He does an awful lot of work, way more than the rest of us. And, you know, I certainly appreciate it, but he, he really does do an awful lot of work for, for a little bit that we, he gets paid. It's, uh, and I appreciate it. I know it's, it's, you know, he's here for every emergency. He's here for every everything that comes up, and it's important to recognize at least occasionally that, uh, what he's doing. So, Lou, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Nicole? I'm good. Okay, the only thing I have over here is uh, we had a call from a uh, resident up on uh, Prentice Corners Road. She uh, was snowed in, uh, and uh, She's 79 years old, and she couldn't get out of her driveway, and she lives alone. Uh, I took a ride by there. I 
your wife and I took a ride by, I should say, on Saturday. Uh, our highway superintendent received a call, so I went up to, uh, to see what, what we could do. She did have a problem last <coughs> summer. Her culvert was uh, in need of repair. Uh, Nick and I went up, and uh, sure enough, it, she couldn't use uh, get out of her driveway, so the county was their responsibility. They came up and replaced the culvert. But uh, with all of the snow we had, she couldn't get out of her driveway. And, you know, I was concerned. So was Nick that if there was ever a fire there or a medical emergency, she couldn't, uh, she wouldn't be able to, to get out of the house. And uh, she asked for some help. There, were, you know, there was nothing I could do, nothing Nick could do. It was, uh, it was up on Renner's Corners Road. He was thinking of taking his equipment, his own equipment, and going up there to try to get her out. But uh, we got a hold of uh, Wesley, called the uh, uh, Nelson, who's the fire chief in Pattersonville. That's his district. Even though this is in Princetown, they serviced that end. And uh, he went up this morning and used his own equipment to uh, clean out the driveway so that she could, uh, if there was ever any type of an emergency or a fire, that they would be able to, uh, to get to her. She did call the town, town hall today, and she called Nick, and she called myself and thanked us for, for her help, for our help, I should say. And uh, I just wanted to thank the Pattersonville Fire Department, uh, the fire chief there, and whoever went up there with them, I think it was someone from the uh, Fire department also shoveled out her her car, got it so she could get out and get food. And the state police, after I went up there, I did notify. I called 911 because nobody had been up, no tracks going up in there. And uh, the state police went up on Saturday afternoon, and they got up to the house to verify that she was okay. She said she had enough food for the remainder of the week. And she just needed her driveway taken care of, and you know I couldn't do it with our with my plow because it was already snowed in at the bottom, and the driveway was quite steep. So I just wanted to thank uh, the Pattersonville Fire Department and Chief Nelson for his uh, assistance in going up there and uh, taking care of that for her, because it would have certainly been uh, a disaster if there was ever a fire there and they couldn't get up there and amount of time needed to uh, to extinguish it or there was a medical emergency where you know she couldn't get out or, or she, you know they couldn't get up there the, the driveway is quite steep and I just wanted to thank him for that for getting up there to do that and that's what's nice about little towns like this I mean we do things like that when we had uh, our water emergency where we had a big we had actually had four breaks we had an older woman again in her 80s panicking about not having water. Uh, she called Sandy, I happened to be here, I brought up some bottled water to her. Um, these are the little things we do just because we're a small town, we, we try to just do what we can for everybody in town. And, and I'll tell you, it's a great thing because the one thing nobody ever asks us is what party we belong to, what political party. We just, it's just a nice way of doing business. And, um, I love the way things are done in the town of Princeton and the surrounding small towns. It's just something we could all be proud of. I might add that, uh, you know, uh, actually, uh, you know, we couldn't use any of our town assets to go up there and do this. This is why it had to be a, you know, a, a private type of uh, help to get up there and do it. You know, and uh, like I said, it was very nice that uh, the fire chief uh, used his own equipment and went up there and did it. And I know that our highway superintendent was going to do it. Uh, if that wasn't, if he didn't take care of it, he was going to take his equipment and go up and do it. So I just wanted to thank him for that. <clears throat> I think that's all I have. Does anybody else has anything? hereby resolved that the town board meeting is adjourned at uh, 7.45.
Do you need a motion? Yes. I'll make a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Sandy? Councilman Pavolda? Yes. Councilman Moore? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Sandy, I didn't forget anything, did I? Okay, just wanted to make sure. Okay, thank you all for coming. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. And uh, we'll see you next year.